what are the things that you are going to learn right what is it actually at microsoft if you're let's say coming from some other company or this is a first job how it is going to feel like for the database part most of the things for the billing platform we used to deal with the microsoft sql server that is kind of like the rdbms that has been prepared at microsoft i might be incorrect because maybe some other teams do follow something else but most of my teams have used to have their own project it was not like a mono repo kind of like thing that used to be at google there is other big data tools as well like something like hadoop hdfs all of these file storages and everything for data lakes azure has its own service for azure data lakes and all every code pr that you are going to raise should be reviewed by a couple of people i found one big difference here with respect to google microsoft is the world's second most valued company altogether and for a good amount of time it was the uh, world's biggest valued company recently apple has dethroned it as well now a lot of time you might have wondered that what it is actually to work like a software engineer at microsoft because most of the microsoft products are software products and they empower most of the revenue at microsoft so if you join as a software engineer here what are the things that you are going to learn right what is it actually at microsoft if you're let's say coming from some other company or this is a first job how it is going to feel like what has been my experience altogether at Microsoft is all of the things that I'm going to talk about in this particular video. It's going to be a fun, interesting video and everything that I'm going to talk about is going to be all of those things that are openly available that you can also yourself Google about Microsoft. But it's just that people don't uh, spend that much amount of time. And by watching this 8 to 10 minute video, you will get a good grasp and good glimpse on what is a tech stack that is actually used at Microsoft, what is the developer ecosystem like and what are the things that is going to be new if you're going to join at Microsoft. So without any further ado, let's just start. But before starting the video, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, do consider subscribing to the channel because we are going to put some really awesome content up ahead on this channel. So let's just start. Before moving forward, I would like to tell you about our brand new offering at AlgoCamp around the advanced Spring Boot backend development cohort. So we were getting a lot of requests to actually launch our next iteration of the Spring Boot cohort and here we are. This one is far more bigger and better than the last one and trust me, if you are somebody who is looking to start their journey in the world of Spring Boot in the backend ecosystem or maybe you already know some things about backend development maybe in Spring Boot or maybe in some other tech stack this is going to be a one-stop solution for you we are going to talk about everything from the absolute beginner level to the advanced level in Spring Boot we are going to talk about how exactly you can set up your backend ecosystem and backend projects in Spring Boot we are going to take a microservice driven architecture and build different different projects including an Uber app including Airbnb app, payment wallet like Paytm wallet app and many more. We are going to talk about how exactly microservices can actually communicate with each other in synchronous and asynchronous fashion. We are going to see a lot of interesting microservices pattern like CQRS pattern, Saga pattern for distributed transaction, how you can implement Saga pattern through orchestration and choreography, how Saga pattern is going to help you with respect to the implementation if you compare that with two-phase commit, how you can implement each one of them, what is the outbox pattern, how exactly event sourcing is going to work, how you can integrate Kafka for your event sourcing and whatnot. We are going to see so many many interesting database concepts like how exactly no SQLs are internally implemented using LSM trees, what are write ahead logs, how you can replicate your databases, how you can shard your databases, how you can design a good database schema and whatnot. All the topics that we are going to cover must be listed in front of you on the screen here. What I can say is that this course is going to be one stop solution to become an advanced backend engineer in Spring Boot. This is definitely going to demand some good time commitment from all the students who are interested but trust me this is going to be one hell of a ride. So what are you waiting for do check out the link in the description section below and read the complete end-to-end -end syllabus of what we are going to cover in the spring boot cohort you can actually use the coupon spring 2025 to get maximum possible discount on the course and i'm really excited to see you guys in the cohort right do check out the link description section below and let's get back to the video with microsoft i was the part of the bing ads billing infra team right without giving like a lot of in-depth context i can just summarize it in a way that all the infrastructure requirements for the billing platform of Bing Ads, which is the ads platform of Microsoft, we used to build everything around the infrastructure requirement for Bing Ads, right? This was kind of like my team and in a nutshell what I used to do. If you talk about the tech stack that I generally worked on was like if for any particular feature work and if you see this infra work is generally more backend heavy, then for backend majority of the things in Microsoft goes with C Sharp and .NET. These are their in-house, I would say, prepared frameworks and the language. 
and has most of the seamless tools and the seamless integrations with most of the Microsoft products. So the language that we used to work with was C Sharp and the framework was .NET. .NET is a world in itself, I would say, but if you're somebody who is familiar with something like Spring Boot, a lot of things is directly uh, correlatable with, um, I would say, .NET as well because of the similarity between the language Java and C Sharp because Java and C Sharp as languages are also pretty much similar. So that's why these uh, two frameworks are also pretty much similar altogether. For the database part, most of the things uh, for the billing platform, we used to deal with the Microsoft SQL Server that is kind of like the RDBMS that has been prepared at Microsoft. Some other interesting tools and technology that we used to interact with was Kafka for all the streaming requirement, Cosmos DB for other kind of uh, storage requirement and all of the different different Azure services for uh, I would say deployment, storages and whatnot. Apart from this, a lot of my work also also integrated a uh, I would say bunch of data engineering tasks for uh, writing a lot of PySpark related scripts. So we used to write a lot of PySpark scripts to actually analyze a lot of things on the data and do a lot of, I would say, uh, data manipulation, preparing some ETL pipelines and whatnot. All of these PySpark script, scripts were actually integrated with Azure uh, Data Factory so that we can run them as pipelines. The underlying databases used to be uh, the Cosmos DB, right? And a few more Microsoft tools here and there. So this is what, like, if you see uh, what I used to work with, this is what it has been there. Now, what I'm going to talk about that what you will feel, let's say if you are coming from a different world altogether, if let's say you are coming from a different company altogether, what are some of the interesting things that you will find at Microsoft, how's the dev ecosystem like and so on and so forth. So let's continue for that. So I would say the dev ecosystem of Microsoft is kind of like a mixed batch. Why? Because a lot of things that you will work at Microsoft is inspired by or it's directly taken as uh, from a lot of open source uh, projects. For example, if you are going to work with the front end aspect of the things, React and TypeScript is the way to go for. There is a in-house, um, I would say again, open source UI library that you are going to separately work with. But the main language is going to be TypeScript and the uh, library is going to be React. That's again, very much uh, inconsistent with the other companies nowadays also that are using. If you see, once you actually join Microsoft, most of the time what you will find is that every team actually handles their different, different project and different, different project repositories. Um, I might be incorrect because maybe some other teams do follow something else, but most of my teams have used to have their own project. It was not like a mono repo kind of like thing that used to be at Google. I made a ded dedicated video on how the dev ecosystem at Google looks like, but here you have different, different project for every single service that you are going to technically work with. Some of the projects might be uh, like heavily uh, inspired by microservices architecture. Some of them might be legacy and still working on slight a bit of monolith, but again, depends on team to team. So every team have their own set of services and projects that they technically manage, right? Now, interestingly, what you will think is Microsoft owns GitHub. So all the, I would say, pull requests, commits, all of these kind of stuff, uh, all the repository hosting use might be happening on GitHub, but generally that's not true. So Azure has its own counterpart, which works exactly like GitHub, which is Azure DevOps. So Azure DevOps is going to be mostly the tool that you're going to work with in order to raise any pull requests, see the commits, see the commit history, uh, get some PR reviews done, even Azure DevOps has a lot of tools using which you can actually try to do uh, task segregation and task boarding, just like your Jira board. There are Azure DevOps based uh, task boards as well. So Azure DevOps is a lot of, um, I would say it has a lot of tools that helps the develop for the developer, I would say productivity. But underlying the version control system, you are going to see very much consistent because it's Git, at least in my team, it is Git. And uh, Git empowers most of the version control. All the general concepts of Git is directly applicable here. Some tweaks here and there you might find occasionally, but most of the Git knowledge is going to be extremely consistent here. So you can see again, one more pointer where Microsoft keeps everything consistent with the outside world. Now coming to the backend ecosystem, there's a good chance that the majority of the backend is going to be powered by C Sharp. Some, um, I would say data engineering and machine learning stuff you will find be people uh, doing in Python. Some very, uh, I would say, minor places you might even find Node.js for scripting purpose and everything. For databases, again, different, different teams have different, different requirements on databases. You might find yourself interacting with NoSQLs uh, or like uh, databases. Sometimes you will find yourself interacting with RDBMS and whatnot. But majority, you will see people actually interacting with Cosmos as the DB, again, hosted on Azure. You will find people using a lot of MS SQL, right, and writing a lot of SQL queries on top of that, right? So this is generally the database aspect that you will see. 
and for streaming uh, systems i would say kafka is something that is very heavily used at microsoft and microsoft also encourages a lot of uh, i would say apache tools including kafka now there is other big data tools as well like something like hadoop hdfs all of these file storages and everything for data lakes uh, azure has its own service for azure data lakes and all so a lot of uh, i would say ecosystem integration you will find with azure now one interesting thing that you will find as a software engineer at microsoft will be a very interesting integration of ai i'm not sure how it used to be like four or five years ago but um, like recently microsoft has very heavily invested in ai so some very uh, mundane or redundant tasks are now automated with AI for the developer productivity. For example, when you raise a pull request, a lot of time is actually spent in writing the description of the pull request. You do not have to do that a lot nowadays at Microsoft. Why? Because there is a dedicated AI tool inspired by and I would say powered by Copilot, which writes the pull request description, at least a good basic summary by default for you. So you can add on top of that summary, but you don't have to do much apart from that. So that saves a lot of time. Apart from that, co-pilot integration in your IDs is going to be something that is going to be very regular. Talking about IDs, so you will find people actually using VS Code and uh, like whenever there is any kind of like other language task, you might use some other uh, language specific IDs as well. But VS Code is something that is very heavily used altogether. Apart from uh, VS Code, for C Sharp related development, Microsoft encourages users of Visual Studio, right? That is the ID that empowers a lot of things for C Sharp and .NET development and has a lot of interesting tools, although I find it uh, quite overwhelming. Uh, it was pretty overwhelming in the initials, but after some time you will definitely get a hang of it. So IDs are there and these IDs generally work on a local machine. You generally clone the projects on a local machine and try to do things or, or I would say dev on top of it. Apart from that, these IDs have Copilot integrated, so seamless AI integration you are going to find that helps in a lot of, I would say, basic test writing and everything. So again, Microsoft is in itself investing a lot in AI and in, like the employees at Microsoft are expected to also use AI to improve their productivity altogether. This is something that is very regular. Apart from that, the code review culture is also like uh, pretty good at Microsoft. Every code PR that you are going to raise should be reviewed by a couple of people, right? I found one big difference here with respect to Google that in Google, one of the code reviewers must be kind of like a, a person who is very proficient in the language that is actually used in the PR, for example, Python. So there should be somebody who has Python readability. No such concept exists in Microsoft, but overall every code PR that you actually raise has thorough reviews, right? And after the, all of the reviews only, you will be able to actually push the PR. So this is something that is pretty consistent. For any DevOps purpose, again, Azure has a lot of DevOps related tools for any CI CD pipelines and everything. You can actually write on top of uh, Azure and things actually work out of the box great. So this is how the developer ecosystem at Microsoft actually looks like. Now talking about like how exactly the culture works is it can be team dependent. Some teams follow sprint like culture. Some teams do not follow a sprint like two week sprint kind of like a culture, but they do have deadlines on which they have to technically deliver the projects. Based on the nature of the project, you might be having, let's say a couple of product designers, product managers, and a team of developers who are going to work in a more collaborative fashion and decide what are the requirements of the project, define the iterations, define the versions, and then work on the delivery of the projects. Overall, I believe uh, Microsoft uses slightly a bit more open source, um, I would say, technologies that makes Googling them slightly more easier when compared to Google technologies because most of the Google tech is proprietary, but that's not the case with Microsoft. Yes, Microsoft also has a lot of proprietary tools, but the volume is slightly on the lesser side and more focus and more emphasis is on open source projects. And the best part about Microsoft is that you can actually take a lot of your ideas to your managers, to your buddies, and you can try to drive them as well. So this, um, I would say, Innovation based culture is something that is thriving a lot at Microsoft and people really like it. People enjoy the fact that they can actually bring features. It's not only the responsibility of the product managers. They can actually bring the features and drive them themselves. And actually this gives a good opportunity for a lot of people to transition from software engineering ladder to product manager ladder. And that's technically possible at Microsoft that if you're a software engineer, you can try to shift your career absolutely end to end from being a software engineer to a product manager. This ladder shift is possible. You need to give interviews for that, but if you have shown enough capabilities and enough, I would say, um, 
responsibilities that is generally taken by prod managers if you have to taken all of them and you are able to clear the interviews internally in the company you can absolutely shift your ladder this gives again opportunity to a lot of people to try out software development to try out product management and then see what suits best for them so again microsoft is a great company to work as uh, for a software engineer a lot of people might think that microsoft the velocity of the delivery of uh, the code might is slow at Microsoft. A lot of people think that, but to be very honest, I didn't find it like that. It is very heavily dependent on team to team and project to project. See, some project has the nature of being slightly slower on the velocity and some project has the nature of being slightly higher on the velocity. So Microsoft has a mix of those projects. Which project you get is dependent on your team, requirements of the org, what is the, um, I would say, upcoming six month or eight month or 12 month vision. A lot of things are going to drive that. But to be very honest, I would say that things are pretty good at Microsoft. If you talk about what I don't like, to be very honest, I'm not a very much fond of the Windows ecosystem. I re really found it kind of like a bit annoying in the initials. But after two to three months, I was able to get a hang of it. But interestingly, a lot of things do run on Linux containers and everything as well. So whenever I used to get that kind of work, I was really happy. So if you are somebody who is like um, too much into Linux, and a very uh, big Linux enthusiast. So initial three to four months might be of some friction to you. But again, good developers are able to sail through in most of the storms. So that's that's all uh, about my reviews and kind of like an idea about what is my uh, what was my work looking like and what if you join Microsoft, how things are going to look like. So let me know in the comment section if you guys have any questions, any thoughts, any ideas that you want to share. And if you want me to make uh, another video on my experience uh, working at LinkedIn, do let me know. I'll try to throw as much light as possible based on whatever data is present. Again, giving the disclaimer, whatever I have talked about, all of this information is already available on the internet. You can definitely try to Google about uh, different and find different different medium articles and official Microsoft articles that talk about the tech stack and the tech culture at Microsoft and how they are making even better day by day. That being said, let's wrap this particular video here. We are going to meet soon in the next set of videos. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. I'm Sanket Singh.